Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James Grounded Family Bible Study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly, I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son, Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Uh, Numbers chapter 13, a good interesting 13 chapter. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send out men, that they may search the land of Cana. Now if we go to Deuteronomy chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1. And verse number... 21 Behold the Lord thy God has set the land before thee go up and possess it as the Lord God of thy fathers has said unto thee fear not neither be discouraged go get in that land take it that's going to come up later and he came near unto me every one of you and said we will send men before us and they shall search out they should search us out the land and bring us word again. It's going to be troubling. By what we must go up into the cities we shall come. The people wanted spies. They lacked the faith to walk by God. And they're going to get in big trouble by Deuteronomy chapter 1. And so we see here in Numbers, the Lord speaking to Moses says, send thou men. Deuteronomy records that Moses says, let's go, take the land, now, go. And the people walk up to Moses and say, we'll send spies, let's go check out the land first. Let's not walk by faith. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Moses is speaking the word of God. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of not seeing, but we don't want to do the not seeing, we want to see it. So God tells Moses, Send the men. In agreeance to what the people want, send them. Now the foreknowledge of God is he knows what these spies are going to do. He knows about the 40 years of waste in the wilderness they're going to walk. But if the people don't want to walk by faith, so be it. And that is the free will of God. God records in the Bible... If they want a lying spirit, they want a lying prophet, I myself have sent that liar. And that's a scary thing about God, that he will send what you want. These people want spies. God says, Moses, send thou men, that they may search the land of Cana, which I give unto the children of Israel. Moses said, go in and possess it. It's your land. God says, I gave you that land. But what you're going to do outside of faith is you're going to work, you're going to walk a wasted 40 years and you're not even going to go in. Everyone a ruler among them. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men which were heads of the children of Israel. And these were the names of the tribe of Reuben, Shemana, the son of Zachar. Give the names the best try you can. It's a lot better trying to read the name in their hard names or Hebrew names than not reading them at all. Simeon, Shephat, the son of Horai, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Now there is that Caleb. There is that Caleb that wants that mountain. That him, I want that mountain. There he is. The one that wants to kick butt. 
The one that's not afraid of giants and will get the victory over giants. And he gets a mountain. And in old age. And God keeps his strength. Even after 40 years of wastefulness. Because of these other guys. The tribe of Issachar. Igai, the son of Joseph. Of the tribe of Ephraim. Osea. The son of Nun. Savior. Deliverer. There's no J. There's no Jehovah in his name. But if we look at Joshua. Here, here he is, the son of Nun. We look at 13, 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Osea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. Moses is the one that puts that J of Jehovah on Osea, Joshua. Jehovah saves. Joshua, Osea, is the one with Caleb, the only two men out of this list here. That will go into the promised land. Of Ephraim. Ephraim the tribe that's not even in 144,000. Named in Revelation. Along with the tribe of Dan. Ephraim's joined the idols. Let him alone. And it's sorry. That from Joshua. That the children of Israel. Are, uh, of Ephraim are such. The tribe of Benjamin. Palatai the son of Raphael. Of the tribe of Zebulun. Gadiel the son of Sodai. The tribe of Joseph, namely of the tribe of Manasseh. Joseph split into two tribes. Gadai, the son of Shushai. Of the tribe of Dan, Amiliel, which means the people. The son of Gimali. Following the people, going with the people, what they think of the people. A lot of the seen church age of the people results in failure. Of the tribe of Asher, Sether. Now with the number value of the Hebrew letters, which have a value of number, of amount, you get the value 666. The son of Michael. The tribe of Nephtali, Naphi, the son of Bushai. The tribe of Gad, Gael, the son of Machai. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land at the request of the children of Israel, Deuteronomy 1. God disapproved of it. But God didn't send those spies. God through Moses says, go in there. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. Get your way southward and go into the mountain. And see the land what it is. And the people that dwell therein. Whether they be strong or weak. Now we're going to look at contrasting words here. The people, are they strong? Are they mighty? Or are they weaklings? Are they few? Or are they many? Many go to Broadway. Few that go through the straight gate. And what the land is that they dwell in. What is this land? They've never seen the land. The last ones to be in this land was Jacob and his sons before they moved down into Egypt. None of their children, the ones that were born, Moses, Aaron, has never been in this land. All the time they were born and lived in Egypt. See the land. Whether it be fat or lean. Uh, no, verse 19. See the land they dwell in, whether it be good or bad. What kind of land is it? And the cities that they be, they dwell in, whether they be tents, cloth, canvas, or strongholds, walls, castles. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, is it a land that we can get fat upon, or is it a land of famines? Is it land that we can't make a living, we can't do anything? What is it? Whether it be good wood therein or not, can we build their trees? Woods, forests, and be of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Show us what the fruit is. Now the time was now yeah. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes would be about our August. When grapes are first coming out in the land of Israel, in the land of Palestine. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin. Unto Rehob, as men come to Hadith, 
And they, they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron. That's where Isaac dwelt. That's where Abraham was. Where Ahama, Shushai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, there's the trouble, there's giants, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. Now that seven years we see in verse 25, and they returned from searching the land after 40 days. You find within verses these numbers, 7 and 40. Important number, 7 complete, 40 testing. Within a few verses of each other. And they came unto the brook Esco. Esco means cluster. And cut down from thence a branch, a branch, one branch, one cluster of grapes. One branch, one cluster of grapes. And they bear it between two upon the staff. These grapes, that cluster, took two men to carry back to Israel. Mighty big juicy grapes. Grapes for wine, for food, for great uh, raisins. A bounty. You imagine what the two scoops would be in your cereal the size of these grapes. And they bear it between two upon a staff. And they brought of the pomegranates, another fruit of the land, and of the figs, another fruit of the land. Figs, type of Israel. The place was called the Brook of Eskel, which is cluster, because of the cluster of the grapes which the children of Israel cut down from thence. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. In that 40 days, they weren't attacked. They weren't harmed. No one died. But they bring up the fruit, the glorious fruit that God had. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron. And, and it says also now in verse 20, Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. If this cluster of grape was just the first part of the harvest of grapes the very first of the of the picking can you imagine what mid-season of grapes were and the final season the final harvest of grapes what they would be in this land humongous they came to moses and aaron and to all the congregation children of israel unto the wilderness of paran to kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregations, showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came into the land whether thou sent to us. And, well, they sent themselves. Deuteronomy 1. And surely it floweth with milk and honey, just as God has said. And this is the fruit of it. So God is right. This land he's given to our fathers, this land he's given to us, is a land of bounty. Nevertheless, what a word. The people be strong there that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. But when we get into the book of Joshua, look what God's going to do to one walled city called Jericho. There's no match for these people with God. Israel's going to win with God. But they're going to be defeated because they don't want to walk by faith. They don't want to believe in God. And the Amalekites dwelt there in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan, Jordan River. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said with one sentence, Let us. Confidence. Confidence in the Lord, Caleb. Go up at once, right now. Let's go. And possess it. Let's go kick butt, Caleb. Caleb believes in victory in God. Caleb believes that that is our land. Let's go. For we are well able to overcome it. And when you look at the life of Caleb, when you read about Caleb, he's not speaking of himself. He's speaking of God. And Caleb will go 40 years later into this land and he will kick giant butt. And he will get a mountain. 
Whereas ten of these spies will die in the wilderness. They will never get back into that land that they were once trotted. Joshua and Caleb will walk that land again and take possession. But the men that went up with him, ten of the, ten of the spies, went up and said, We be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. They're actually fighting Caleb. Caleb says, Let's go. And they're like, No, we can't go. Come on, let's get the victory. No, there's no victory. God is not able to get us into that land. We fear the people. We fear those giants. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel. And bringing up that evil report of what God said that land is, God saying, this is your land. I will give you the, the, the people of this land. I will give you the victory. You will win. They say, no, God can't do it. And they're doing the same thing that the modern Bible writers do. They are changing the word of God for the worse. And God calls it an evil report. And we are warned in the Bible, especially in the book of Revelation, for those that change what God has said is happy, even in Genesis chapter 3, with Eve, changing the word of God. That's an evil report. You have taken what God has said and you have changed for the worse and you discourage the people. God says that's an evil report. The land, though, we have gone to search it, is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Not true. You got the Amicites, the Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Canaanites. They're in the, they, they haven't been eaten up. The giants haven't gotten victory over them. David and his men will go kill giants. We read in the book of Joshua where these people, the Anakins, the Hittites, and the Jebusites, they kill giants. The only thing bad about the giants, they're so big, it's just they hit the ground with a louder bang. Goliath was a giant, and he just went boom even harder. All the people that we saw in it were men of great stature. All of them? Kind of a lie, extraordinary story there. And while they're talking, one man is defending God, one man's ready to go. An entire group of people are listening to ten idiots. Ten people are going to destroy. Because I forget what the age limit is going to be. Most of these adults are going to die in the wilderness because of these ten idiots. Ten people destroyed the power of God for the nation of Israel. And there we saw the giants again, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. Well, okay, maybe that big. But again, the harder they fall as grasshoppers. So we were in their sight. We're just pity little things. And yet grasshoppers, locusts, God used to wipe out a nation called Egypt. As much as he used those grasshoppers and all that to, to wipe out a nation called Egypt, he can, he can take these grasshoppers, little group of people, and Jews are small people. What about Og? Then they destroy Og. Then they destroy nations as far as where they come from. Aren't they going to? We know by having a full Bible, they're going. They have and will going to destroy Jericho. They will destroy Ai and all the cities thereof. Ten men cause other troubles and problems for the nation of Israel. 